Welcome to step 8 of making a top-down adventure game in Pico 8. In this step, we'll add animated tiles. If you just started Pico 8, you'll need to load your game. Once it's loaded, hit escape and we'll get started. Animated tiles are useful because they give our game a bit of life. They can be used just for decoration or they can be used for things like traps that the player has to navigate through. Switch to the sprite editor so we can create the sprite tiles we need. Our animations are going to be simple with just two sprites that toggle back and forth. For this step, we're going to create a simple spike trap. We'll create two sprites next to each other just like we did for keys and doors. The first tile will be with the spikes up. If the player touches this tile, they lose. This tile needs two sprite flags turned on. The first is with sprite flag 3, which means this is the first frame of an animation. The second flag is sprite flag 6, which means the player loses if they move onto this tile. The second tile will be with the spikes down. This tile only needs one sprite flag. We'll turn on sprite flag 4, which means this is the second frame of an animation. Since we're not using any other sprite flag, the player can walk through this tile unharmed. Let's add a few of these spike traps to our map in the map editor. There we go, that looks good. Notice we have some spikes already up and some already down. Next, we need a sound to use when the spikes go up and down. Go to the sound editor. We'll add sound effect number 3. You can make whatever sound you want or no sound at all. Now to add the code. Switch to the code editor and go to code tab 1. We already have a function called swap tile that switches out a tile with the next sprite, but for animation we need an unswap tile function to switch the sprite back. So really the animation is just the tile switching back and forth between two sprites. You can actually just copy and paste the swap tile function and make a few edits instead of writing the whole function from scratch. Copy the swap tile function and paste it right below that. Now change the name to unswap tile. Now, where we have tile plus 1, just change it to tile minus 1. This means that we swap to the previous sprite instead of the next sprite. Next, we need a function that will go through the whole map screen and look for animated tiles. If it finds any tiles with sprite flag 3 on, it will use the swap tile function to switch them to the next tile. If it finds any tiles with sprite flag 4, it will use the unswap tile function to switch them back to the previous tile. So how do we easily go through every tile on the screen? There's an easy way, but it requires a bit of explanation. Let's look at this visually. Basically, we need a loop. A loop will run the same code as many times as you like. In our case, we want a loop that will start at the top of the screen and go to the bottom, swapping or unswapping tiles on the way as needed. Once it gets to the bottom, it should move over to the next column and do it all over again. And it should keep going until every tile in every column on the screen has been checked. If you think about it, there are really two things we want to do over and over again. The first thing we want to do over and over again is check each column. The second thing we want to do over and over again is check each tile. So that's two loops. The first loop will go one column at a time across the screen. The second loop will go one tile at a time down through the single column. When you have two loops working like this, it's called a nested loop because one loop is nesting inside the other. In our case, the loop that goes through the tiles is nested inside the loop that goes through the columns. To write this, we need to tell the first loop which column to start at and which column to end at. Then we need to tell the second loop which tile to start at and which tile to end at. It stores these numbers in X and Y as it goes through each loop. You can see how these numbers change as it goes through each loop. Now that we can see what we need to do, let's add the code to actually do it. Back in our code, make a new code tab and let's call it animation code. We'll call this function toggle tiles. Let's write the first loop. We'll have it start at map x, which if you remember is the x coordinate of the map tile in the top left corner of the screen. We'll have it go from map x to map x plus 15, since that will cover all 16 columns of the map tiles on the screen. Then inside that, let's write a second loop. We'll have it start at map y, which is the y coordinate for the tile in the top left. And we'll have it go to map y plus 15. Now inside that second loop, we just need to check and see if the tile at x, y is an animated tile. First we'll check if it's an anim1 tile. If it is, we need to use our swap tile function and then play the sound effect. If it's not an anim1 tile, then we check if it's an anim2 tile. If it is, then we can use the unswap tile function and play the sound effect. If it's not either anim1 or anim2, we don't do anything at all. Whew, okay, that was a lot of code and it looks complex, but what it's really doing is actually kind of simple. Now let's add some code to make this tile toggling happen regularly. First, we need timer variables to store how fast the tiles should animate. 
Switch to code tab 1 and we'll add them to the map setup function that runs at the beginning of the game. First, we'll add a variable called timer that holds the current time between animations. Next, we'll add a variable called anim time and set it to 30. This will store how long we should wait between animations. Since Pico 8 updates the game 30 times a second, setting this to 30 will make sure we have one second between animations. Now let's add a function called update map that will toggle the tiles on screen using the timer. If the timer variable gets to zero or less, then run the toggle tiles function and reset the timer variable to whatever we set anim time to. Then we just have it subtract one from the timer to make the timer count down. This means that every time update map runs, it will keep the timer variable counting down. But if it happens to hit zero, it will toggle the tiles and reset the timer. The last line of code for this step is just to make sure we run update map every time Pico 8 updates. Switch back to code tab zero, and in the update function, we'll add update map right above move player. Okay, that was a lot of code, but let's review. It's actually pretty simple. Every time the game updates, we update the map. If the timer gets to zero, we toggle all the tiles on the screen by swapping and unswapping tiles. Then it resets the timer. Let's test it out. Save the game with control S and run it with control R. Look at that, we have animated tiles. You'll notice though, we can walk right through the spikes and you don't lose. That's not how it's supposed to work. In the next step, we'll actually make it possible for the player to win and lose the game. 